Howdy, I'm Gray Pilgrim. Well, over the years of the development of the firearm, you know, we know what a, what a pistol, a revolver, a rifle look like these days, but uh, there were times where people just were, met, were tinkering with various ideas, some of which <laughs> lasted, some of which did not. I have an interesting book here. It's called Firearm Curiosa by a man named Willem Winant. And this is just a discussion of the various weird firearms of history. Like here's one with a, with a whole plethora of knives on it. I've got one with a bayonet on it. I think I've shown it recently. And, uh, well, like that. <laughs> uh, but there's a lot of various ones. This was written in the 1950s, but it's still an excellent book. Well, in front of me here, I've got my collection. It's a small collection, but it's, it's my small collection of weird firearms. Uh, they're firearms, sort of. Some of them, sort of. But they're weird. Starting with one of the oldest. Well, actually, no. Let's start with the oldest. This is my Frank Wesson single shot. Frank was the younger brother of Sam Wesson of Smith & Wesson fame. And, uh, but he was also a gunsmith. And he came up with this design. It's a tip-up barrel, see, in 22 short black powder only. It has a Damascus barrel on it and a single action with spur trigger. And it works. Uh, I think at one point it must have been owned by a museum because this is a standard museum tag that's on it. And I, I don't know. I have no uh, further data on its origins, but uh, I bought it at a gun store and it's... Uh, you know, one of my prize, well, I've got a uh, Frank Wesson rifle up there as well, uh, 32 rimfire. But, uh, you know, Frank is an interesting character. He came up with some interesting designs. Speaking of Frank, I showed this one recently. This is my, my pivot uh, barrel gun. Now, Frank did his like that. That's from the 1850s, by the way. He did his in a much smaller form factor, shooting 22 short which at the time was just called 22 uh, Rimfire, because that was the only 22 around. It was the very first 22. Uh, but this one's uh, in black powder with uh, nipples on the back. But still, it's a pivot uh, revolver based on the original Frank Wesson uh, Derringer design. Well, with those out of the way, let's go over to Europe. This is a pinfire. Pin fires are, well, this one happens to have a broken mainspring on it, but, uh, you know, it, I have it as a, an example of type. If, in case you're not familiar with pin fire, in the days before center fire cartridges were developed, or even rim fire, uh, a man named Casimir Lafaucheau in uh, Paris came up with a design. And the design basically has a cylindrical uh, cartridge for the bullet, bullets on the front, full of powder, but instead of having a uh, cart or a uh, primer on the on the the rear of the thing, it has a pin driven down through the top, with a bit of a primer compound, usually fulminate, at the base. So when you drive that pin in, it explodes the fulminate and shoots the cartridge. So if you look carefully, you'll see that it has these little slots here. So when you uh, load it, what you do up through the side gate is missing the side gate, but you would basically line up the pins with these slots. Then when the hammer comes down, it comes down directly on that pin and uh, that sets it off. This is, is a, a lost design these days, but um, it was one of the first. Other ones I have, this is actually a 44 uh, uh, black cap and ball. It's made out of extremely cheap pot metal uh, from someplace in Arkansas, I've never heard of them before, and it doesn't work with spit. Uh, the hammer just does not impart enough uh, uh, force on the uh, nipple to set off a, a cap. It's uh, this is an example of an extremely cheap, poorly made gun. I uh, was totally uh, uh, unimpressed by it. I mean, it's not something I would really use, but. You know, my cousin gave it to me, and I kept it around for that reason, because it's, uh, you know, well, his family uh, gave it to me. But uh, still, what a piece of junk. 
And this is an example of a modern, well, semi-modern. You've seen my other uh, uh, starter pistol. This is another one. This is also made in Germany, but it was made in post-war Germany when they were really uh, hard up for uh, good uh, machining and, and other things because, I mean, the, all of their machine tools have been bombed to the Stone Age. And again, this is made out of pot metal. Uh, the uh, hammer is just a, a piece of sheet metal that's been uh, stamped into that shape. It, uh, it does fire, sort of, but uh, it's, uh, it's cheap. I mean, the hammer, actually the hammer uh, face does not really contact the, uh, the uh, blank here. It's the here in the middle of the hammer that does it, <coughs> as you can see. <coughs> Again, a weird pistol and a little bit cheap. And this is a uh, F e, uh, EIG model E16 from Italy. Another Derringer, but this Derringer is kind of weird. It has four barrels in it and it pivots open like this. And when you fire it, it has a, an extremely brutal trigger, but the uh, Firing pin uh, goes in a, a clockwise direction from barrel to barrel to barrel to barrel and uh, shoots all four rounds. 22 long rifle. Interesting little pistol. Not very practical, but quite interesting. And I thought it was interesting, so I picked it up. You know, the gun stores around me seem to have weird things every now and then. And when they get weird things, I buy them. <laughs> I just, I like weird gadgets. I mean, I love the gadget factor of firearms. And this is a, a perfect example of the gadget factor of the firearms. You know, just what people come up with over the years. Now, these are just little, little pistols. Uh, I'm sure you can go out on the internet and find other videos full of a lot more weird pistols than uh, I have here. Uh, I'd suggest going to see an arsenal because uh, Othias will show off obscure things and he will describe them in detail, and he's a far better historian than I am. But, uh, oh, and do look for this book if you can find a copy, Firearms Curiosa. It's an excellent book. It's a good read, and uh, it's also a reference text for when you find something weird, and you can look it up in here. Anyway, not much else to talk about. Happy trails.